October 1989, I was 14 years old when I stepped off the plane and into what is now my home, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And I'll never forget that day. It was snowing, you know, the, the kind of light, fluffy snow that just floats in the air. And I had never seen anything like it before. And for me, for me, it was, it was beautiful. You know, coming from Beirut, Lebanon, where I was born in the middle of the war, this moment marked the start of a new chapter in my life. I came from a place of fear, a place of uncertainty, but standing there in that cold Canadian air, I felt something else, hope. The flames, politicians across the country. Thousands of demonstrators march. You know, recently I've seen things happening in Canada that trouble me. You know, people that are burning our flag and using hateful language toward this country. What's even more concerning is that some of these actions are coming from immigrants themselves. You know, people who, like me, came to this country, came to Canada for a better life. I love this country and I feel a deep responsibility to speak up. You know, Canada gave me the opportunity, gave me the freedom and peace I never had growing up. When we come here as immigrants, we have a responsibility to really respect and contribute to this beautiful country, not, not to destroy it. I was born in Beirut, Lebanon in 1975, right in the middle of the war. My mom had to deliver me at home because it wasn't safe to drive to a hospital. And that was just the beginning of life in a conflict zone. Growing up, life was always uncertain. We lived in an apartment building on a top floor, and I still remember the nights would have to rush downstairs to the lower levels when the bombings got too close. And, and as kids, we became so used to it that we could tell just by the sound of the bombs whether they were far away or coming towards us. You know, the ones that, that whistled meant they passed over us, but the others we knew they were nearby. One day in particular, I'll never forget, we went to school right at the border between Beirut East, where I lived, and the west side. And we had, we had to leave school in the middle of a conflict. I know my dad rushed to pick us up along with many parents, and I don't think I've seen anyone drive as fast as he did that day, listening to gunfire and bombs on the way home. It was, it was terrifying. I mean, but that was life for us. You know, a lot of times we were taught and not allowed to talk about, you know, politics, not even among friends because you never knew who might be listening. But despite all of this, there was also, you know, some beautiful moments too. You know, we lived close to the beach and a short drive to the mountains. And when there was peace, we could enjoy the weather, we would enjoy the food, the people, the community. But those moments didn't really last long. There was always a shadow of fear, and my parents knew we needed to leave if we wanted a future. Adjusting to life in Cali was hard, especially for my parents. They didn't speak any English, so finding you know, work and getting settled was, was a challenge. But for my brothers and me, it wasn't long before we started adapting to our new life. I knew a little English already, and going to school helped us pick up the language quickly. The kids at school were curious about us, and honestly, they were welcoming, something that made those early days a lot easier. But one thing we all struggled with was the weather. You know, coming from the heat of Beirut to Calgary winters was a shock to the system for sure. I still remember walking to school in minus 20 degree weather, bundled up, you know, walking against a freezing wind and thinking, is this what we signed up for? Um, and I, I still remember my first year here in grade nine, we weren't allowed to stay inside during lunch and had to, to go outside in the cold. At the time, it felt almost cruel. But now that I sit and think about it, you know, looking back at it, I would take a cold day in Canada over a war zone any day. It was part of the adjustment and eventually Calgary felt like home. For me, Calgary felt like home almost right away. I made friends quickly and many of those friends are still in my life today. It wasn't long before I found something I loved, you know, playing pool. I started playing competitively and it became one of my favorite things to do. In fact, it was in a pool hall where I eventually met my wife. 
We were friends for a few years before we started dating. So life in Calgary just felt like it clicked. I got to do things I never thought I'd do, you know, like build a career, start a family, and have the kind of stability I could only dream of as a kid in Beirut. Today, I have four beautiful kids, and I'm so grateful for everything that Calgary and Canada have given me. That's why it's really, and it's so hard for me to watch what's happening today. I've seen people, immigrants like me, burning the Canadian flag or disrespecting this country's values. As someone who knows firsthand what it's like to flee conflict and come to Canada for a better life, I can't support that kind of behavior. You know, Canada isn't perfect. No country is. But the way to voice your concerns isn't through hate or destruction. It's through respectful dialogue, contribution, unity. When we come here, we have a chance to build a future. But we also have a responsibility to protect and honor that country that gave us that chance. As immigrants, we bring diversity, sure. I mean, we bring new perspective, possibly some new ideas. That's what makes Canada special. But it's up to us to integrate, to respect the laws and the values of this country and to contribute positively to its future. We came here because we wanted a better life, and it's on us to keep this country great, not tear it down. So as immigrants and Canadians, we all are responsible for the future of this country. I love Canada, and I'm proud to be Canadian, and we need to work together to keep this country the welcoming, inclusive place that it's always been. I didn't come here because I had a better life. I came here because I wanted a better life. And Canada gave me that. It gave me the, the freedom I never had. It gave me the peace of mind that I never knew and the chance to really build a life, you know, I could only dream of in Beirut. It's a place where we take care of each other, where love and support are at the heart of our communities. I've seen that kindness time and time again. Canadians, they mean well. They care, they support, and they lift each other up. So uh, as we face these tough times, Let's not forget who we are and what this country stands for. I'm proud to be Canadian and I believe in the Canada that welcomed me and my family so many years ago. We are a resilient, diverse and loving nation and I hope that everyone who calls this place home remembers that we are stronger together. Now I know that many people feel strongly about the issues that we're facing today. And I truly respect that. But we do need to come together and find constructive ways to make Canada better. I'd love to hear your story. What does Canada mean to you? Whether you've been here for generations or you're new to the country, share your thoughts, your experiences, and let's really celebrate the country that we call home. Go ahead and comment below, send me a message, and let's start a conversation about the Canada that we love, the Canada that we want to keep building together.